Hello everyone. In our previous video related to the flame photometry, we have discussed about the principle and the instrumentation. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the properties of the flame, some terms used in the flame and the applications of flame photometry. Basically, we are going to focus on the quantitative determination using calibration curve method. So what are the properties of a flame? The burner used in the flame photometry should have the following properties. The flame should have ability to evaporate the solvent to give a residue and it should convert this residue to gaseous state atom and finally into the individual atoms. The effect of the flame depends on the temperature of the flame and this temperature can be monitored by the following method. The first method is the fuel to the air ratio. The second is the type of the solvent for preparing the sample solution. The third is the amount of the solvent which is entering to flame. And the fourth is the type of the burner used in the flame photometry. Flame photometry employs a variety of fuels mainly air, oxygen or nitrous oxide as oxidant. And as we have already discussed, the burners are of two types, that is the total consumption burner and the premix or the laminar flow burner. Now, what are the different processes which are used in the flame? The first important process is desolvation. And it is the liquid solvent is evaporated and the metal particles are dehydrated by the flame. And the process is known as desolvation. The second is vaporization. The sample vaporizes to a gas and the process is known as vaporization. The third important term is atomization and it is the reduction of the metal ions in the solvent to metal atoms by the flame heat. The next important process is excitation. The electrostatic force of attraction between the electrons and the nucleus of the atom helps them to absorb a particular amount of energy. The atoms then jump to the excited energy state and the process of jumping of atoms from the ground state to the excited energy state is known as excitation. The next process is emission process. Since the higher energy state is unstable, the atoms jump back to the stable low energy state with the emission of energy in the form of radiation of characteristic wavelength, which is measured by the photodetector and the process is known as emission. Now what are the applications of a flow flame photometry? The first and important application is it is used for the determination of the availability of the alkali and alkaline earth metals which are critical for the soil cultivation. In agriculture the fertilizer requirement of the soil is also analyzed by the flame test analysis of the soil. In clinical field also the potassium and the sodium ions in the body fluids the muscles and the heart can be determined by diluting the blood serum and aspiration into the flame. It is also used for the analysis of the soft drinks, fruit juices and the alcoholic beverages can also be analyzed by using flame photometry. Now coming to the determination of unknown concentration, say if the given sample is potassium. So, if the given sample is potassium, then the wavelength is fixed at 766 nanometer using monochromator for the determination of the concentration of potassium in a given sample. Similarly, if we want to take some another sample like sodium, then we have to fix the wavelength at 589 nanometer or if we want to uh, give the test for the lithium, then we have to fix the wavelength at 670 nanometer etc. Then the blank sample is sprayed over the flame. For the blank we take the distilled water 
and using this distilled water we set the wave, uh, meter reading at zero now in the next step there is the preparation of a series of a standard solutions of known concentration these solutions are sprayed one by one in the flame photometer and the readings are noted using these readings the calibration graph is plotted with the concentration in the x axis uh, against the intensity of the emitted light or we can say that the meter reading on the y axis now the sample of unknown concentration is sprayed over the flame and the intensity of the emitted light or the meter reading is noted now from this calibration curve by using this calibration curve the unknown concentration can be determined we get a straight line curve between the concentration and the intensity of the emitted light or by using this calibration curve we calculate the concentration of unknown we have already discussed about the calibration curve method and its calculation so you can go to the i button to check out the video now what are the advantages of flame photometry the first and important advantage is that the method is very simple and simply used for the quantitative analytical test based on the flame analysis the method is very inexpensive the determination of the elements such as alkali and alkaline earth metals is performed easily with the most reliable and the convenient methods it is quite quick convenient and selective and sensitive to even parts per million or parts per billion range what are the limitations the first and important limitation is th uh, that there is alteration of the light emission because of the altered flame temperature it also needs the perfect control of the flame temperature the next limitation is that there is the interference by other elements and this is not easy to be eliminated the next important limitation is about the heavy and transition metals because of the number of the absorption and the emission lines is enormous and the spectra are complex so we cannot be able to determine the heavy and the transition metals through flame photometry and there is a the presence of inadequate selectivity of the wavelength in the flame photometry so these are the various limitations of the flame photometry so this is all about this video lecture thank you for your time